Hello everyone, this is Professor Robert Solis and welcome to this video lesson. What I'm going to do is sh to show you how to solve a problem like this where I want you to create a series of numbers. I'm calling it here the series generator and in this case I want you to create this series 1, 4, 8, 13, 19, 26 and then whatever the next number is you're supposed to be able to figure that out. So here are some, so some various requirements and this is kind of like a before and after shot of what the program is supposed to look like. Okay, so let's go back over here and see if we can focus on these numbers. So what I'm gonna do is open up Paint and see if we can draw these, or, or try to investigate some patterns of numbers and how they work out. So I know that the first number is gonna be one, and then four, and then what do I got here? Eight, 13, 19. So eight, 13, 19, and then the next number is 26. Okay. Well, the first thing that I'm noticing is that the difference between these is three. And then the difference between these is four. So that's the first thing that you try to do as a programmer is to see if you can detect any type of pattern. And here I think you can clearly see the pattern is that uh, the number that we are supposed to add to the initial number is starts off with three. And then after that, it's going to increase by one. So it looks like we've got these numbers increasing by one. So I'm thinking this. I'm thinking let's have a counter. So I'll just crudely write it down here. Let's say that we have a counter and I'm thinking that we'll just let this thing initially equal to three. And then I just simply put this through a loop over and over and over again. And every time it goes through the loop, it's just simply going to add one to the counter so that I go from three to four, four to five, so forth and so on. And then I just add it to whatever the first number. Now, it looks like for the first number of this series, I don't know, what should we call it? Um, I guess let's just say series. Something like this. Series num, perhaps. And um, I say that we let that start off equal to one because that's really what the first number is. So we'll do something like this. We'll take the series number, which is an equal to one at first. Then we'll add that to the counter, which is three. And so that'll give us the four. So then the series number will become four, right? And then um, the counter will increase by one. So we'll say four plus four. Well, that's going to give us eight. And then the series number is then going to be eight. And then the counter will increment to five. Then five plus eight will give us a 13 and so forth and so on. So I think this is the pattern that we want. So let's go back over here now. I have Visio already opened up and I want to see if I can develop a flow chart to understand how this thing is going to work. So first of all, let me go ahead and drag a process over here and create some of these different variables that I'm thinking that we're going to need. Increase the font size to 10 points. And what do I need? I definitely need the user number because they're going to ask or they're going to request how many numbers are going to be displayed. So double click over here. I'll say uh, let user num um, be an integer. And what else do I need? Uh, I need a counter, as you can see here. So we'll say let counter be an integer. And we'll set that equal to three. I think that's what we said, right? Oops, sorry. I think we said we wanted this equal to three, right? So here it is, counter equals to three. And then we'll let uh, series num, the first number will be one. So let's go back over here. Let me click over here. Let series num be an integer. And we'll set that equal to one. Now I think this is a good list of the variables that I need. It may not be exhaustive, but that's okay. We can always come back to that. So let me just go ahead and um, put an arrow from here to here. I'm gonna reduce this distance over here because I don't think I need to waste all that space and something like this. Okay, very good. Well, now that I have my variables, let's go ahead and obtain the data. So I'll just go ahead and drag one of these data items over here. And let's see here, let me move this into position. Looks like right there looks good. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna read user num. Let me go ahead and increase the size of the font here. So control A and increase the size of the font to 10 points. That looks pretty good. All right, so once we have obtained the data, let's go ahead and put this into a loop. So I'll drag a decision shape over here, scroll down a little bit, 
increase the font size. And what are we doing? Well, I think we, we need to generate however many numbers the user wants to see. So let's say, for example, if the user wants five numbers, then we're going to have to go through this loop five times as we generate the numbers. So how are we going to do that? Um, well, I mean, one way is to reduce the user number one by one until um, it gets to zero. I suppose that's one way. Um, another thing is I'm noticing a pattern over here that, um, you know, we, we start off with a counter equal to three and then it goes to four and five and so forth and so on. So let's say the user wants to see four numbers. Okay. So if they want to see four numbers, that seems to be, well, let me see. The counter seems to be one less than the user number. So if they want to see five numbers, that would be this one, two, three, four, five. They want to see five numbers. Well, that seems to be one less than the counter. So I guess what we should do is we should say if the counter, um, well, if the user number plus one is equal to the counter, as long as the user number, yeah, maybe that's the better way of doing it. As long as the user number is less than or equal to the counter, then we'll keep on doing this. Let's see what that works out. So we'll see if the user number is less than or equal to a counter. Let's go back over here and see what happens. So if the user says, I want five nums within my series, right? So I want five series nums. Well, if that's what they want, circle that, um, then that would mean displaying 1, 4, 8, 13, 19. And let's see here, we're, the criteria that we're currently using is saying if the user number is less than or equal to counter. Well, at this point, counter would be six, and that would give us our next number. So is five less than or equal to counter? Yes, it is. So it would display that number. And then it would increase it to seven. Well, then we would do the loop again to determine, you know, if we're going to have to display the 26. Well, the counter at this point would be seven. Is user num, which is going to be five, is five less than seven? Yeah, so this is not good. This is backwards. What I should have done is this. Maybe like if counter is less than user num. Let's see if that works out. So the counter is going to be 6 when I want to display this 19 because that's the five numbers. Is 6 less than 5? No, it isn't. So how about this? How about if user if counter is less than user num plus 1? if it's less than or equal to. Let's see if I can move this over a little bit. Let's see if that works out. So the counter would be six in order for me to get the three plus six, which is going to be, or 13 plus six rather, which is gonna be the 19. And if that's six, let me see, is six less than or equal to five plus one, which is what the user wanted. So counter is in fact equal to six, so that would work out. When counter then goes to seven, the next one, that wouldn't work out and it would stop the program. So this is exactly what we need. All right, so I'll put an arrow over here. And uh, what I need to do is, if this is in fact true, then we need to first of all display the contents of the series number, which is this guy right here. And, um, and you know, kind of like append that to the output. Well, if that's the case, then maybe what I should do is go ahead and create another variable called output and we'll make this a string so we'll say let output be a string and we'll initially set that equal to nothing okay all right well if that's the case first of all let me go ahead and do some adjustments here all right so now uh, let me go ahead and move these like this and move this one like this all right so counter is less than or equal to user num plus one and um, what I need to do is um, if in fact this is true then we'll say output is going to equal to this let me just take this guy over here copy and paste and I'll put it over here and I'm going to delete all this and we'll say output is going to be whatever the old let me get rid of that capital O 
good, is going to be whatever the old output is. And we're going to concatenate um, whatever the series number is, which in this case is 1. All right, so once I've done that, then we've got to get ready for the next row. And the way that we do that is we increment the counter. So we'll say uh, increment counter like that. And I don't like the first letter to be capitalized. I guess it's not that big of a deal. It's just a habit, I guess. All right, so we're going to increment the counter. And what else do we need to do? Um, we've incremented the counter, and then the, the series number is the old number plus the counter. So series number is also going to change. Series num is going to be whatever the series num was plus the new value for the counter. All right, so now if I have the counter, and if that is 3 at first, I've just incremented it, so now it's going to be 4. I'll do... Actually, no, that's not right. I should have what I should have done is I should have added the one plus the three to get the four. So I really should have done this and then increment the counter. So this is not right. Let me cut that out and put this over here. This needs to appear after. So I display the result, which is one. This is initially blank, so now the output is going to be just the number one. Now the series counter is going to be um, 1 plus the counter, which is 3. And that's going to give me 4. So now the series counter is equal to 4. And now I increment the counter to 4. So that next loop, I can just add these two to get the 8. All right, so I think that does it. Let me go ahead and click a down arrow right here. And I think I've taken care of this. So now it's just an issue of doing this loop again and again. So let me go ahead and get a connector tool and go over here like this. By the way, if this is true, so let me double click this, put um, the word true here. If this true, if this is true, then we do this and we just keep on doing this as long as counter is less than or equal to user num plus one. Now when that's no longer true, then we're finished with the program. So I can just take um, one of these shapes over here. I'll just copy and paste this one over here. Copy and paste. And I'll just put it over here. Let's say uh, end of actually instead of uh, end of well I, okay I'll, I'll put end of program, but I'm actually not supposed to put end of program. I'm supposed to display the results. So what I'll do is I'll just take this guy over here and put it over here like this, and then I'll draw a connection from here to here. And instead of read, we'll say uh, write output, which means display this on a label. If we were talking about Visual Basic or any other programming language, we're basically going to display this thing to a label. All right, well, now that I have that, I can go ahead and draw a connection tool from here to here, because that's the end of the program. I guess I can move that over here like this, make that look symmetrical. That looks pretty good. So let's go over the logic of this. I want to make sure that logically this is correct okay I have these variables I'm going to obtain the user input as long as the counter is less than or equal to the user num plus one we are going to continue to output the series of numbers and the first one of course is going to be one the output is initially blank so blank concatenated with the number one just simply means the number one now I get ready for the next series number which is going to be one plus whatever the counter is which we initially gave it a value of three so that's going to be four that's the next series number we increment the number uh, the counter to four and then we go back over here and say is the counter less than or equal to whatever the user number is supposed to be well or user number plus one I should say so let's see if this works out I'm gonna I'm gonna write some stuff down here so let me just go ahead and write the items here so the counter will set that initially equal to three the series num, we said that was going to be 1. That's the first number in the series. And let's say that the user wants to see five numbers. All right. When we first, uh, I, I guess what we should have also done is we should have said, uh, let's take a look at what the output is. Okay, so at first, 
the output, let me draw a line here, is blank. So I'll just put a shape like that to indicate that's blank. Now according to the program, as long as the counter is less than or equal to user num plus one. Okay, so is counter less than or equal to user number plus one? Well, user number plus one would be six. Is three less than six? Yes. So output is going to be whatever the output is concatenated with the series num. Well, the output is this, the series number is one. So now what I have is the number one right here. And then it looks like we have uh, the series num is going to be incremented by series adding series num and counter. So this plus this. So now this is going to go to four. Okay. And then we go back over here. Is counter less than user num plus one? Is counter less than user num plus one? Oh, so I forgot something. Sorry about that. Uh, we're supposed to also increment the counter. Sorry about that. So this is going to go to four. Now I can ask the question. Is counter less than or equal to user num plus one? Is this less than six? Yes, it is. So the output then gets appended with the series num, which is now four. So we'll just put the number four here. I haven't really dealt with the spaces here, so I'll just put that little shape here for a space. Uh, so I have the number one, I have the number four, and then the series num is gonna increment because we're gonna add series num plus counter. So now uh, series num is gonna be eight. And increment counter, which now goes to five. And then we go back over here. Is counter less than or equal to user num plus one? Well, let's see here. Um, is counter less than or equal to user num plus one? Yes, it is. Because this is six, right? If I add five plus one, that's six. Five is less than six, so that's good. Output is going to be an appending by adding the series num, which is now eight. So we put an eight over here. So it's displaying one, four, and eight. And uh, let's see what else happens. The series number gets incremented. So this plus this. So now that's going to be 13. And then counter gets incremented. So that's going to go to 6. Now, is 6, which is the counter, right? That's 6. Is 6 less than or equal to 5 plus 1, 6? Yes, that's true. 6 is less than or equal to 6, which is 5 plus 1. So the output gets another series number so there it is 13 so i'm running out of space here uh, one four eight thirteen those are four numbers displayed by the user series number is the addition of these two now so that's going to get updated to 19. and is that the next number in my series let's see here uh, one four eight thirteen nineteen yes it is it looks good and of course the counter is going to increment now to seven and Let's go back to Visio. All right, we've done that. We've incremented the counter. Now, is the counter less than or equal to user num plus one? Well, let's see. The counter is seven. User num plus one is six. So seven, uh, seven is no longer less than or equal to user num plus one. So this program doesn't work because it only displays four numbers, but the user wants five. So we're going to have to manipulate this thing over here um, to accommodate. It looks like what we really wanted it to do is we wanted to loop one more time. So what I'm thinking is, what if we change this to two, right? User num plus two. So let's see what happens. Um, is seven less than or equal to five plus two, which is seven? Yes, that's true. So that would loop one more time, which means that the series num would get sent out to the output. So 19 gets sent out. So let me just squeeze it right here. That looks like a terrible 19. Uh, series number is going to be incremented, so 7 plus 19, so that's going to be, scroll down a little bit, there we go, that's going to be 26, and this is going to go to 8, alright, now, is 8 less than or equal to user num plus 2? Uh, no, 8 is not less than 5 plus 2, 7, so that's the end of the loop, when this is finished, now, I can um, go over here, write the output, which means display it on a label, say, for example, and end of program. So I think this is it. This works. All right. So I've tried to show you um, what my thinking process is. I'm thinking out loud as I'm trying to develop an answer for this program. Well, let's go ahead and develop this thing in Visual Basic. So let me go ahead and open up Visual Studio.
All right, and then I'm going to drag and drop a label, a text box, and a button. So a button, label, text box. And I'm going to move the label over here to the upper left-hand corner. Now, according to the handout, it looks like that's supposed to say numbers to display. All right, so I'll open up properties. And I'll say numbers to display colon. Next to that, we're going to have a text box. So let me place the text box next to it. That's not right. I like that magenta underline. There we go. A button that says generate series. Okay, so start over here. Something like this. And for the text, we'll say generate. And then we'll have a label. So I'll just take this label copy and paste it and in terms of the properties I have to say auto size false border style fix 3d let's go ahead and resize that label to about the same size as that button now I want the text to be centered so I'm going to drag this thing down to text align we'll go to text center and then of course I'm going to remove the text in the text property press enter so this thing is blank let me go ahead and reduce the size of my form I don't want to minimize or maximize box, so I'm going to make both of those false. And that's not supposed to be form one. That's supposed to say one comma three comma four comma thirteen comma so forth and so always series generator. Okay. So sorry that my speech slurred there a little bit. One comma four comma what is this? Uh, eight thirteen nineteen twenty six. Okay. So eight thirteen nineteen twenty six dot 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 series generator looks pretty good alright let me save my work and now that I have this let's give names to these various items so this one is going to be the user num text box actually what I should have done is txt user num right for the Hungarian incorporating the Hungarian notation this is going to be btn uh, generate series and then finally we'll have LBL result all right so let's double click the button so we can go into the code area and pretty much we're gonna type in the following comments like we always have um, declarations get user input calculation there we go and finally output well, for the declarations, uh, let me go back to the flow chart. Uh, let user num be an integer. Okay, so dim user num as integer. Next, I have counter as an integer, and I set it equal to three. Okay, so dim counter as integer, and we'll initialize that to three. Uh, series num, we're going to set that equal to one. So dim series num as integer we set that equal to one and uh, then we have an output as a string dim output as string and I'm gonna set that equal to nothing initially get user input well that's part of what this is right read the user num okay so user num is gonna be convert dot two int 32 because that's a 32-bit integer whatever is inside of the text box dot text well now we're ready for the calculation. For the calculation, that's a while statement because as you can see there's an, a looping structure taking place over here. So I can just use a while loop. While counter is less than or equal to user number plus two. While counter is less than or equal to user number plus two. Oops, plus two. If that's true, then append the output with a series num. Okay, so output is going to be whatever the old output is. I'm going to concatenate that with and I'll convert dot to string whatever the series number is. We'll send that to the output. Next series number is going to be uh, incremented. Uh, so we'll simply say series number is the old series number plus counter. Alright, so series number is equal to the old series number plus counter. And then we increment the counter 
So counter equals counter plus one. And that's it for the while statement. So we keep on doing this until this is finished. Then when we're finished, we write the output. But we're going to put that over here in the output section. And that just simply means lbl.text is going to be convert dot to string whatever is within the output variable. And then, of course, we're finished with the program. Well, let's see if that works. So let me go ahead and run the code. And, um, oops, sorry, it's still, still running here. Sorry about that. All right, so let's say I want four numbers. So 1, 4, 8, 13. Well, I like it, but boy, they're all concatenated together and no space. So let me stop this program. Let's just go ahead and put a space here. See what happens. All right. So at first, we send the output, which is nothing. Okay, so that's why the cursor is blinking there. Then we'll put a space. Then we'll display the series number, which is going to be 1 at first. Then we go through this loop. We, we, leave, uh, we append the output. So here it is with a space. Okay, so let me put a space after that. And then the next series number, which is 4. Okay, then we go through the loop. Whatever the output is, which is this, we're going to add a space. Okay, so we'll add a space. And then the next series number, which the next series number is 8. So I'll put an 8 there. Okay, this seems to work really nicely. This is just going to continue to add uh, numbers to the output, and all we have is just a, a space at the very beginning, and we can get rid of that with the trim feature. I'll show you that trim string feature. I think this is it. This should do it, so let's see what happens. All right, so let me put a 4 here. 1, 4, 8, 13. Good. Let's see what happens if I want 5 of these numbers. There's the 19. How about 6? There's the 26. All right. How about 10 numbers? Yeah, it looks pretty good, right? Because if I take uh, 13 plus 6, that's going to be this. If I take 19 plus 7, that's going to be this. If I take uh, 26 plus 8, that's going to be this. 34 plus 9, this. 43 plus 10, 53 plus 11, so forth and so on. So it looks like our series generator works pretty good. All right. Is there anything else we're supposed to do? Let's take a look at the requirements. Display a message box if the user enters an inappropriate entry. Uh, make sure to blank the text box. Okay, so that's one thing. If there's an inappropriate entry like a symbol, a spacebar, or a letter perhaps, and then also, we're supposed to display a message box if the user number is negative. Okay, so I could have incorporated that into my flowchart. I was kind of like thinking big picture, but that's okay. I'll go back over here. Um, and I think we can just do that within here. Uh, for example, um, if the user enters a negative number, right? So we don't want that. Let's go back over here to the requirements. Uh, it says display a message box if the user enters a negative number. Okay, so we can do this. If uh, oh, first of all, we got to get the we got to get the number here. So let's do this. If user num is less than zero, which means it's negative. If that's the case, then we'll do a message box dot show. And um, so we have to display a message. Uh, you entered. Oh, how about negative numbers are invalid? So. Uh, negative numbers are invalid. Quote. Okay, next we have the caption or the title, and so we'll say uh, error for the title of the particular window. Uh, let's see here. Let's just simply have an OK button so that the user acknowledges that. Comma, the icon will be an error in this case. I'm just making this up, right? You can do whatever you want. That's all I need, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. Now, after this happens, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blank the text box. So we'll say text box and quote, close quote, and then I'll end sub. Uh, exit, is it? Exit sub? Yeah, there it is. Exit sub. Because I don't want to continue running the program if this is true, right? I want I want the user to enter the number correctly, so I don't want to enter. I don't want to do the rest of this stuff here. All right, let's see what happens. Let's run the code, and here's the program. And I'll put negative four. So here's a message box. Negative numbers are invalid. 
this negative 4 should disappear. Perfect, it is. Now if I said I want four numbers, then it works. Good. So I've taken care of the negative number part. Um, what else do I have to do? I have to display a message box for inappropriate entries, like a, if the user enters a letter or something like that. Okay, well, that can be in the form of a try block. So we'll do something like this. We'll say try, and what I want to do is I'm going to try to do this. Let me cut this and paste it right into here. That's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to get the item from the text box and convert it into an integer. Now, if I can't do that because the user entered a letter or a symbol, then this won't work. If it did work, then it'll just simply go over here. Now, let's assume it doesn't work. Well, if that's the case, I'll display a message box. And I'll say, um, uh, you must enter a valid number. Right? That's what the problem is. They didn't enter a valid number. So comma, and we'll just say uh, error again for the title. Um, and, and then in terms of the buttons that I want, just display an OK button, comma, and the error icon is fine, close parens. Now, when that happens, let's also blank out the text box, and then again, exit sub. I don't want to continue because there was an error. All right, so let's see what happens. Let me run the code, and let me put the letter A here. Up, oh, can't do that. You must enter a valid number. It blanks it out. Good. How about if I enter 3? Okay, that works out. All right, how about if I enter Q? Nope, can't do that. What if I were to enter negative 4? Nope, can't do that. Negative numbers. But then finally, if I display a number like 4 or 11 or any other integer, then it should work. All right, which it does. Very good. So this is Professor Robert Solis. I hope this video lesson was helpful. Have a good day. See you next time.